Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Anna Jimenez McMillan. In our show this time, we'll review the most recent top five Think Tech talk shows and staff pick. We'll check out the elements of the best of the best and get a handle on the public issues and the guests involved. Think Tech produces more than 35 talk shows every week in our downtown high tech green screen studio. Our Think Tech talk show offerings are very diverse and their coverage is also very diverse, covering things you might never have otherwise known. Every week, Think Tech chooses its top five Think Tech talk shows from the week before based on the number of views each of them has had on the internet this time, the winning shows were as follows. Number one, from the series Beyond the Lines, hosted by Rusty Kamori, it's called two-time Olympic silver medalist Lindsay Berg Beyond Volleyball. Lindsay shared why she became one of the world's best volleyball players, winning the silver medal twice in two Olympics for Team USA. She also shared valuable insights about leadership, creating a team culture of excellence, and finding greatness. You were back right now on your trip yeah. because you got inducted into Punahou's Hall of Fame. I did. Congratulations. I was, uh, thank you. I was surrounded by some greats as well. Super special um, to have a high school that is so much tradition in sports and academics. Yeah. Um, so you have that honor, yeah. and it was great. My whole family came. My sister surprised me with my niece. Obviously, my grandma is one of my biggest support, um, and she's still here and yeah. came and kicked it with us. <laughs> it was amazing. I had everyone, my friends that I went and played with in Punahou. It was really special. What did you learn from your Olympic experience? I have so many stories, and I've been through so many ups and downs that all the downs actually turned into more um, important lessons and experiences when I was in the down of something that seemed to be so great, say, to the outside world. Yep. Um, I can't even say there's one thing. I think perseverance, though. Oh, yeah. Um, you hear about being an Olympian, and someone's like, oh, they're an Olympian, but the life is not very glamorous. Uh, the amount of hours that we put in, a lot of sports in the Olympic world don't get paid. Uh, we're fortunate that we do have an opportunity to go overseas and make a living in a professional league. But when we were in Colorado Springs, there were wrestlers that had to be in the top three of their weight class to even have a place to live. You become friends with them even though you're competing, but it, the competition is just when you're on the court. There's no reason people that you have so much in common with to share your life with each other. And it's something really special that you really can't get anywhere, and that's what sport does for people. I took being a captain very seriously. Yeah. I got to a point where I knew my skill level was kind of what my skill level was going to be. So how can I enhance my whole game in another way that wasn't going to be physical of how I set, how high I jump, can I serve better, this type of thing. So I took it very seriously as how can I be the best teammate I can be and the best leader I can be. How do I get the most out of Rusty you as my teammate? Yeah. Can I just say something really specific or bark something really quick and you're not going to take it personal and you're going to do it? The other person, maybe I have to, you know, blame it a little bit on myself, which I'm okay with as a captain, take some responsibility, but then maybe also say, but if you do this, it might help us both. So let's both do this. Yeah. So I practiced. I practice my communication. I practice my body language of what worked for my teammates. Like, I don't. I want this person to be the best they can be next to me. So, how can I bring that out of them? Number two from the series "Taking Your Health Back," hosted by Wendy Lowe. It's called "Growing Healthy." You can do it. Helping Hawaii grow healthy. I've got part of the solution. Wendy introduced the Tower Garden, explaining what it is, how it works and why it's part of the solution to optimal health. Taking your health back is easy when you're ready to take that step. About seven years ago, I was introduced to a concept of growing, and it's called the Tower Garden. And so on this slide here, this is what I started growing on my balcony. Mind you, no experience in growing, no even passion or desire to grow anything. But what happened was this opportunity came to me via a company the Tower Garden Company, and we were test marketing to see what it would be like if people like me were being given a tower and 
see how easy it is to grow or not to grow. So I flew mine into Hawaii. I started with the little seedlings, and I'm going to show you in a little bit how simple all this is. Start with a little seedling. After two weeks of germination, we put it into the tower garden, and then it grows on its own for about three weeks in the tower. It's ready to consume. That's the same tower a few weeks later, and see how mature all that lettuce came. And so as we grow, you're supposed to cut and eat, and that is right there. It represents non-GMO seeds. I don't use any pesticides. Um, it sits in the tower, and there's a little pump that turns on and off 24 times a day, feeding it all the nutrients in the water. And so I basically don't have to do a whole lot. And that's why my job is so simple, because I travel a lot. Um, I want to say raising uh, produce and veggies on the tar garden is a little easier than even raising children. <laughs> I don't want to compare them, but it does. It is. And what I get from it is I get very great results of great food that I get to consume daily. This young man, he's Chef Mooney, and he's a dear friend. He is right in the heart of New York in Manhattan, on a rooftop six stories up. He has a restaurant on the basement called Bell Book and Candle, but he believes in the towers so much. On the sixth floor, he has 30 towers, and that's some of the one tower that I'm showing you there. But he produces his tomatoes, his strawberries, all of his different uh, greens that he uses downstairs in the basement. All he does is he harvests it every day, hoists it down uh, a, a dumbwaiter, down to the basement floor, and then he prepares it for his lunches and his dinners, everything coming from the sixth floor rooftop. The neat part is when Hurricane Sandy came through, all you got to do is take the water out of the, the 20 gallons, take it downstairs, put it under cover, Hurricane blows over, damages all the, whatever it does damage to, the crops on the, in the fields, etc. When the storm blows over, walks it back upstairs, puts the water back in, still producing. Number three, from the series Konnichiwa Hawaii, hosted by Emmy Hanamizu. It's called Chio Flynn, piano studio instructor, pianist, and composer. In this all-Japanese broadcast, host Emi Hanamizu interviewed Chio Flynn, pianist, composer, and instructor. Learn from Chio Flynn how she shares her aloha spirit through her piano and daily blog. ハワイで長い間、あの、ピアノを教えながら、え、4枚の ハワイで、え、こちらの生徒さんにピアノを教えていらっしゃるやりがいっていうのを教えていただけますかえっと、教えるやりがいというのは、やっぱりあの、ま、当たり前のことですけど、何もピアノ弾けなかった、もう0 
number four from the series The Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection, hosted by Gwen Harris. It's called Talking Story with Michael Paolo, Hawaii's own smooth jazz saxophonist. Michael discussed how he got his start in a musical family and how to keep smooth jazz alive here in Hawaii. I didn't start until I was 15. I went to St. Louis High School uh, there, and I, I decided to play joined the, the band on a whim because uh, <laughs> it was an elective course. Uh -huh. you know, in, in, in high school, you could choose physical education or band, right? So the first semester, I chose PE, and I got tired of running because <laughs> that's all they did was run. Uh -huh. So I said, let's forget this. So um, a lot of my friends, yeah, man, you should take band because it's an easy A. You know, the teacher was very lenient. So I said, okay, so I signed up for band. And... Um, Fortunately, uh, I didn't start on the saxophone. I, 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 he put me on the oboe. Oh, you know, wow. That little big charmer instrument, and it, it was terrible, right? But, <laughs> but I had to play it in symphony band. I learned how to play it. And finally, I just got so fed up. I said, look, if you, I don't, you don't let me play something else, I'm going to quit. <laughs> oh, wow. So, wow. So anyway, so, so he said, well, you know, we're kind of short on the instruments. If you can borrow an instrument from somebody you know, I'll let you play, right? <laughs> so my my uncle had a saxophone, and, and my my dad's younger brother. So I I called him up. I said, Hey, can I buy your saxophone? I want to you know try to learn learn playing a band. He, and and he said yes. And um, so that's how I got started. So I, I got a saxophone. I, I I played it, and I fell in love. When we talk about jazz and we talk about smooth jazz, people some people don't really know the the difference. So when we talk about contemporary jazz, smooth jazz and our alternative jazz. What, what is the difference, and how did you get into playing smooth jazz and contemporary jazz? Well, you know, jazz is such a broad, broad uh, idiom. You know, I mean, it can, it, it, and, and it's got to the point where, basically, if you improvise over a music bass, you can call that jazz, mm -hmm. because jazz is all about improvising, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so in, in musical styles, Today, I mean, you, you get the old style, you had swing, you had bebop, you know, you had fusion, and then you had hip-hop, and then you had R&B, and, and then all these different idioms. And contemporary jazz, you know, in, in these phases, people, they had to come up with some kind of name just to market it, put it that way, right? So we went, we went from new adult contemporary, contemporary jazz to, to smooth jazz to from quiet storm. I mean, all the formats, they try to identify, you know, what the instrumental music of the day was. So right. it's basically just a label that they can market. So to, today, smooth jazz has become uh, um, a melding of really pop, R&B, and, and jazz. Mm -hmm. Number five, from the series Talk Story with John Wahei, Hosted by John Wahe'e, it's called Hawaiian Nationalism, Equality for All, with guest Poka Lanui. The former governor and his guest, Poka Lanui, discussed Hawaiian nationalism and what should or should not be done for people who want to live in Hawaii, but not necessarily be a citizen of the U.S. The thoughts are important, and they uh, go through racial lines. They go through national lines. The wisdom that comes down from ancestors or from any place, from even children, right. has to be seen for the weight of the wisdom itself. So Abraham Lincoln said something very important that we should take heed to. Right. There's another kupuna who also said something, and that was Kuhio. Okay. When okay. he said, we cannot continue to act like crabs. We've got to kick the bucket over so that we all can get out. Antipilahi, another kupuna. Would, would instruct, she would say, you know, what you need to do is distinguish between reality in fact and reality by agreement. I got it. Okay. Oh, man, that <laughs> is a very heavy statement. I mean, that is a really heavy statement. Yeah. And so, for me, I was, I'm sure in you. Uh, <laughs> thought, no, 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 no. So I asked her, explain. Yeah. And she said, Hawaiian. What is a Hawaiian? Yeah. And I said, well, a Hawaiian is a person who descends from ancestors who were in Hawaii prior to 1778, the arrival of James Cook. Right. And she says, that's reality by agreement. Now tell me about the Hawaiian in reality, in fact. I says, well, what do you mean? She says, does a Hawaiian cry? 
Does he laugh? Does he love? Does he hate? Does he hunger? Who is he really? Yep. So you look into the essence, the reality, in fact, not by the agreement of how we choose to define a Hawaiian by his religion or his geography or his racial ancestry. I had to go through the doorway of indigenous people's rights because uh, we were so far behind in terms of Hawaiian nationalism that people simply wouldn't consider the idea that Hawaii was an independent nation or is an independent nation. But we went through the doorway of indigenous peoples and the discrimination against indigenous peoples. So I eventually became elected as a... Well, even the, even the United Nations in those days, the United Nations itself, didn't really have uh, didn't, hadn't really dealt with that issue. So, And our staff pick from the series Hawaii Together, hosted by Kali'i Akina. It's called Akina and Yamachika Talk Taxes with guest Tom Yamachika. It's legislative season again, so taxpayers beware. Tom Yamachika discussed some of the latest proposals to raise taxes on Hawaii residents. Find out what makes sense and what doesn't. You'll discover what the legislature is up to in terms of proposed taxes on Hawaii residents. Well, what does the foundation do, Tom? We try to educate uh, people and politicians alike on what the tax laws they are trying to vote on uh, actually accomplish or what, what they actually do. So sometimes, you know, t tax is a, a tough subject, so uh, sometimes people know what they're voting on, sometimes they're just following others. And we want to make sure that they're educated enough to uh, exercise their independent judgment and, uh, you know, vote purposefully as opposed to just blind. As originally enacted, um, when the, uh, the half percent surcharge on our general excise tax took place, you know, ostensibly to fund the rail, uh, one point that, you know, wasn't really talked about too much uh, was the fact that the state was skimming off 10% off the top, uh, presumably for uh, administrative costs. But uh, it turns out that what they, what they skimmed off uh, was far more than any administrative uh, effort would require because uh, they skimmed off $25 million a year, and uh, that is comparable to the entire budget, top to bottom, of one whole department of taxation. So in order for them to administer just one measure, they were going to be collecting enough money to fund the department all over again. That's right. That's why we kind of stepped in and said, this is excessive, guys. Uh, something's, something's wrong here. And, uh, you know, we filed suit. Um, and the suit wound its way to the Supreme Court of Hawaii. We argued the case a couple of years ago. Uh, and we're still waiting for the decision. Now, there's another issue that often thorny, and it has to do with transient accommodation, vacation rentals. And I think a lot of times the public doesn't realize the difficulty is because we're dealing with different jurisdictions. We're dealing with the state and we're dealing with the counties and, and they're not always in, in harmony. What's going on in terms of some legislation being considered in this area? For the last several years, there have been you know, constant bickering between the state and the counties because uh, you know, in, in, in the old days when the transient accommodations tax was established, uh, the counties persuaded the state to give them give them some of the money. So, uh, in I think the early 2000s, the state began giving them a percentage of the TAT collections, and uh, that money grew over time, and the tax rates grew over time, and you know finally uh, in 2013 or so they said well. Um, uh, we, you know, we really want a, a revenue source that is stable and predictable. That was the wrong thing to say, because they then gave them a fixed number that didn't rise with the, you know, with the GET collections, and the rate went up too. So that's, that's, that's when, that's when um, our, our, G, our transient accommodations rate went up to nine and a quarter. You can always find the links to these shows in our daily email advisories. If you don't already get our daily email advisories, you can sign up to get them on thinktechhawaii.com. 
These are only samplings from the top five and the staff pick from across our 35 weekly talk shows. There are, of course, many more. To see these top five and staff pick shows in their entirety, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Great diversity, great community, great content at ThinkTech. If you have questions or comments about these or any of our shows, please let us know. And yes, it's okay to share them with your friends and colleagues. Thanks so much for watching our shows and for supporting our efforts at ThinkTech. And now, let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio, and we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or better yet, Sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together.
We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Anna, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Anna does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest, a host, a producer, or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important Think Tech episode. I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Anna Jimenez McMillan. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>